Okay, everyone, we're going to do something a little different today. Let's see if my ice cream is up. So all I have to do basically is see if it's up like this. It is. So we're going to run a little regression again. But we're going to do multiple regression. But I want to show you something first. So check it out. So we'll just call this. What do you people like? What do you people like? What do you people like? like uh very sad when you like bad things like um in one class they made me do vape so i'll do vape don't vape kids don't vape unless you buy it off me so vape all right lm that's the linear model function if you've been following around now dependent variable always first so this is consumption don't worry we're not going to use this all the time this will be the last time we use the um ice cream data set but you got to think you know okay it's an easy one, but this is the good, the bad, and the actually illegal about this. So check this out. Okay, now I'm going to put income, right? This is not the income from uh, what we did earlier. This is just the income from uh, the ice cream data set. So watch this. Then we do a summary. Not too, It's not too difficult, right? And then you put it in vape, right? Vape, there it is, the party. It's a vape. Oh, wait, that's not good. Vape and a party. All right, don't vape, kids. All right, there it is. Very unsignificant, if that's a word. So take a look. This is basically saying with every unit of income, you're only getting a 0 0.00505 increase of ice cream and then of consumption of ice cream. And then obviously a tea value, not that good. But look at this, 8.014. And it seems to be the same. And look at your uh, multiple R square, very low, far away from one. And your residual standard error isn't too, too bad on 28 degrees of freedom. Remember 30 minus the two uh, variables, independent and dependent variable. So if you've been following along, you kind of get it. So the p-value is above 0 0.05, which means like this one over here, although this is the LSAT and the family, it's all over the place. Right. And you literally can uh, graph it again. So all I have to do is press the up button because I have it there. Look at GG plot. So I just put the ice cream data set. Right. Uh, X is the income, not the family income. That's different. That was from the other one. And then Y is the consumption. I'll just keep it all the same. Uh, consumption. Here it is. Right there. Uh, and you basically are getting, look at, same kind of deal in the sense that it's not significant, meaning point zero, point, sorry, point 0.8 is basically saying that there is no relationship between the income and consumption, the income in, uh, independent variable cause of the consumption increasing. It's all over the place. Look at, okay. So it's all over the place like the last one. So there is no relationship because it's basically saying when you have a high P value that um, the points are moving without, without the independent variable. So there is no relationship. So we accept the null that there is no relationship. We do not accept an alternative hypothesis that uh, income either increases or decreases consumption. It's it's the same thing as we did with the others, right? And even if you did, let's say vape two, let's make a vape two and we'll do a price. See, this is makes coding easy. You just move it up, but you have to be all the way. Like if I do it here, I'm hitting the up button. It doesn't work. But if I do it here, it does. So watch. Right like that. So you basically, I want to call this vape two because that disappeared because I went up to show you. And we're going to use price, right? And this is going to be interesting too. So it's not as bad as the other. So now we do summary vape two. Don't vape kids. Um, okay, vape two. So here you see it is lower the p-value, but it's still not statistically significant, and the multiple r squared is not the best. But look at the, the negative. So right when you see a negative, that means, oh, okay, so consumption is decreasing by a bit. However, it's not, quote, unquote, statistically significant. The 0 0.05, like I've said, is a very tight. Um, number where it's kind of difficult to get to make it like, okay, we really need the independent variable price to have an effect on consumption. If it was 0 0.05, that would be against the null. That means the lower, the better. It, you shouldn't say that, which we're going to get into right now. 
because you're essentially saying the lower, the better it predicts your model of the p-value, this one here, because it's basically saying that there is no, there uh, is a relationship that the movement is, is not happening without the independent variable. But this is not significant, but there's still movement. Look at uh, negative two. And notice the t-value is negative, which means it's moving in a negative direction. So what does it mean? So you just come back up here with the ice cream and you just plug this in and we're going to see price. What? So this is our practical value. Oop, price, I think, my mistake, I meant to say. Uh, price is the thing. See, we always make sense, when, uh, make mistakes when we're going. And Y is the consumption, my error. So you basically are getting, because that didn't look right. See, it is going down, So, but it's not significantly going down, you see. So that's why you have a very um, low multiple R squared. Remember the R squared is saying, how much is your data being explained by this model? And it's not being explained that much, but it's still going down. So on the practical side, you could say if you're a business person for every every unit price increase, you're getting a decrease of consumption by 2.04, which is you know a decrease. So you might say, okay, I better not. In, uh, increase the price of ice cream. And that could be anything, right? That could be anything. However, there is an interesting thing that happens with multiple regression. That's when you're doing two uh, independent variables at the same time. Let's take a look. Now, we already know that um, temperature is very significant, right? So let's do vape three. So let's do income and temperature. So all you got to do is temperature, right? And then plus income, right? Now let's see. And now let's make sure we know it's the data, right? So there's no misunderstanding ice cream. This is linear regression where we're looking to see if there is a relationship. And again, I can't, you know, this is for business, right? If business, any business you have starts seeing a decrease, in consumption with the, with a high with a higher price you start rethinking your strategy your business strategy so it's important for business it's important for human rights it's important for a lot which we're going to get into uh later in other videos but look it it's still not going down too much significantly but you'd still want to reevaluate your your uh, business model now this is temperature and income not price but watch what it does Vape three. Now we're going to see a summary. Wait, what's going on here? We knew temperature is significant, but now income becomes significant. And we use the adjusted R squared because we have two variables. Well, that's weird. Income is usually not significant. Why is it all of a sudden significant when you do multiple regression? Because this temperature, here's temperature, right? And here's the income is affecting this, is affecting the income. So it's a positive or negative correlator, meaning temperatures having effect. That's very dangerous and borderline illegal. Why? That might sound like, you know, I'm hysterical, you know, like a telenovela or something, right? The men and women and children are all hysterical in those telenovelas from Brazil, Mexico, etc. Although I love them because then I can practice my Spanish. But think about it. Let's say you were doing a diabetes medicine, right? And you just reported this data. Income is significant, but we know by itself it is not significant. And we know, um, actually, that doesn't let you go back uh, the uh, plots with, uh, you plot, see, look at that. Oh, it did. Okay, it is doing it now. That's good before they didn't let me. Uh, so income we know is not significant whatsoever. Look at that. Income and, oh, that was income and price. Uh, um, consumption and income. We know it's not significant. It's all over the place. Et but then boom, we get a significance, meaning it's under 0 0.05 so we can say significance. If you're doing diabetes medicine, if you're doing some kind of COVID vaccination, if you're doing any kind of experiment with medicine and and, and you have this variable that's driving down or up another variable, this could be a form of quote unquote p-hacking, meaning you know 
maybe in the back of your head that income isn't significant. That's not income. Let's just say hypothetically that's a medicine that, you know, Johnson and Johnson or whatever one of these companies are making and there's pressure for it to be significant, right? There's literally people in jail for that. So you got to be wary of that. And not only for, you know, just the big ones where I just said medicine, et cetera, but even for say, you know, if you're doing a business model and that comes up as significant, uh, and even when you turn it around, let me take a look. Let me go income first, see if there's a difference. Because these are sometimes sequential, meaning, you know, will income be? Now let's do vape three again. Although I am against drug kids, seriously. I'm not, I don't do drugs. Is it a drug? I don't know what even what vape is. Um, it's still coming up significant. So what can you do? Well, there is a function. Oh, and I wanted to show you as well. And you, this is you're gonna kick out of this. Uh, you can also do there's consumption plus temperature, right? Watch plus the mix of temp temperature and income. That with that little doble punto. And then we're going to see summary. I didn't change the name. You would in other cases. So you can just go back to each one. Uh, vape, I assign the argument here. Boom, boom. And then you see income and temperature. And look at then, boom, nothing all of a sudden is significant. So something's happened. That's a negative correlator where it's bringing down the temperature. Income is bringing down the temperature. So what can you do in these cases? Which is weird. It's not significant, but it has a high multiple and it just uh, squid. So something's going on with the data. It can be the number of points. There's only 30. But you have to be a weird of this when you start mixing variables, right? It's going to have effects on the other variables in the model. That's why I always do it by piecemeal. Like, let's do one variable at a time first. But what happens if there's pressure to have income become uh, significant, then you mix it with temperature and you report that data. And that becomes kind of sketchy, like thoroughness so or whatever that woman's name was going to prison. Uh, that was the company. You know, this isn't like, you know, doing statistics, but, you know, there is a lot of quote unquote fraud. And there is statistical fraud out there. And that's what you have to. And then sometimes people, it's more pedestrian, meaning, that people aren't doing it on purpose. They just don't understand these uh, issues with the models. And I've read, epi uh, okay, this is going to be difficult. Epidemiology, look at, I said it, literature and epidemiology, and they have to be very aware of this, uh, the study of disease and the study of medicine, bio, et cetera. So what can you do? There is a function that I'll, I'm going to end with here that is the ANOVA function. And in R, it's a sequential function. So you can basically do, uh, both. So like, if you just call it, let's not, okay, let's do vape. Okay. Let's do the opposite of vape is, uh, drinking water. All right. Drink lots of water, kids. It is hot. Drink water. Um, and you basically get AOV, but you can also do it. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to show you some different ones, but for now, we're just going to focus on this. So you basically have consumption. I'm going to explain to you what this is because we are going to use it later on in the class. Um, and let's do say temp. Now let's see if this works. Income. And then you can use data equals. So I was not confused. Ice cream. And now you can do a summary of AOV. So that's drink water, right? So you don't think I'm a bad person. And all of a sudden, see, you're still getting this like that because it is what we call sequential. But let's do something else, right? Let's do drink water too. See a tilde, remember, income, and then plus temp. Now we're going to do the summary. Big party with drinking water, kids. Don't vape. I was at a, uh, one of those uh, clubs or something, and someone came up to me and said, hey, you got some vape? And I said, what are you talking about? Like a halls, like for your throat. And then I saw all these people smoking. It's blue, green, and all these different colors, just like this party. 
I said to myself, hey, if these kids love it so much, I'm surrounded by these kids. Why don't I sell vape? No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to sell vape. Uh, but anyway, someone really did come up and ask me for vape. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. All right. So now we see income is going back to not significant. Why? This AOV, that's the ANOVA function. And let me put up here where we still have some information. That's called ANOVA. Um analysis of variance where we're taking consider see there's other ANOVA uh, models that's sequential meaning this one will try its best as the algorithm goes um, because nothing's perfect to do income before it interacts with temperature so that's one way to kind of deal with this issue is to put uh, change them around so if you notice temperature in this one that's why I did it first is interacting with income and this is um Significant, right? Because income's coming after. But when it comes first, it's going back to where it's supposed to be. Not significant. And temperature is remaining significant. But that could have an effect on that in different models. The goal here, and I'll end here, is to understand that, you know, when people start doing multiple regression, that is you're adding different variables. And they also add different dependent variables. But we'll get to that another time in the MANOVA. But basically, if you're adding variables, independent variables, those can affect your overall data and other variables. And that in lies a problem for your statistical models. And you have to be aware of that because if people are doing, uh, you know, medicine, they say, oh yeah, you know, dark chocolate reduces, you know, sugars, but they were taking diabetic me uh, uh, medicine as well, let's say, for example, you know, is there an interaction there where it's not the dark chocolate that's decreasing the sugars? It's actually the diabetes medicine, and that's interacting with the dark chocolate. Because you hear a lot, oh, but dark chocolate's good for you or something. I mean, I'm a little suspect of those studies, but the thing is, this is what you have to be aware of. And I want to thank you all for coming out and listening to these. They are important, um, especially making these graphs and, you know, just understanding, even if you hate statistics, what's interesting about this, you can say, hey, you know, I get it. There are two independent variables. They are interacting with each other. You know, is this medicine or is this whatever really as good as they're saying it is? And, you know, so you become a more critical thinker as well. It's not just about just plugging thing in. This is the P value. This is the R squared, um, you know, et cetera. This is, but this is, you know, being a little more uh, of a critical thinker. So take care, everyone. And um, I hope everything is going well with you. And even though we have still some diseases from the monkey, what is the monkey pox thing? Uh, and the, um, you know, uh, COVID is still going around other strands. I hope everyone's doing well. Take care, everyone.